welcome back to Curious Business Talks. In today's interview, we are talking with Petra, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her career, her path to UX UI, and maybe some unknown facts about her. Petra? Hi. Hi, everyone. And thank you so much for having me. I've told you this a million times, but I'm I'm so happy to know you and to, to get the chance to meet you and to talk to you here. So yeah, fun. Thanks so much. <laughs> You're absolutely welcome. I, I had the most genuine interaction in a while with you and the whole banter through social media, you know, I it happens from time to time, but it's very rarely when you get a like, get a comment with someone on social media, and you hit it off instantly, like you knew each other for a really long time. And uh, this happens with you, and yeah. I'm really happy that we actually connect in real life as well. And you're finally here on the podcast. And to start it off, I would probably ask you to introduce yourself a little bit and your background and maybe tell us why you chose UX and UI. Mm, okay, so as you know, I'm Petra. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm originally from Croatia, from Split, which is on the coast. And I have moved maybe two years ago to Germany. So now I'm here. Um, I've uh, been, I think, in design ever since I was a kid like uh, doing forms or doing some kind of CSS on the side with something. And I finished high school for media design. So photography, video projects, um, I don't know what we did that. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, then I was, uh, I finished a bachelor for visual communication design, which is again, the same thing, but a bit more in depth uh, and more professional. And uh, then I worked, uh, for three companies, two agencies and one company, and now I'm freelancing. So that's fun. Um, yeah, I've, uh, how I started, I think generally going from, firstly, I wanted to do 3d animation. My, my dream was to be a Pixar animator. And, uh, then I, uh, started, okay, maybe that's too hard. So maybe we do photography. And then I was really into photography and then I was in design, there was branding. And I think what I really always wanted was something where I can connect like, uh, science mm. with, with, with design. Mm -hmm. And I felt like UX is a kind of a perfect blend because it also has that compromising that you can have. You have to make sure all the business requirements are there, all the technical requirements are there, all the user and, and uh, accessibility and, and aesthetics and everything. So it was... It was just like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> okay. okay. Did you say pixel or Pixar animation? Pixar. Like, uh, like what the studio. Ray yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that yeah. That's like quite quite the goal, like quite the bar. And I mm -hmm. know about that. Uh, yeah. it, very interesting. And you mentioned science, but did you have like a certain, how to say, um, leaning towards specific science or just any science in particular? Mm. I think uh, like science in in terms of psychology and like mm -hmm. humans, like, um, I don't know, when I was younger, I was really into chemistry. Okay. But uh, that doesn't help that much. But, uh, you know, m more in this ergonomics and how does, how can you calculate things that are so, you know, so Unbelievable. natural? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. you can actually touch them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you would say that you are looking for a profession that, like, maybe it's like a glue between two different, like, yeah. sectors. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> for those of uh, our like, maybe there are listeners here who like education. They're curious about many topics, and they probably listen listen to the previous episode about chemical engineer or the one about UX again. Uh, but if they don't know what is UX UI, how would you explain what it is? Like for someone who doesn't have a clue what it is, like a grandma or a kid. Uh, and that's you... so cool. I love that question because <laughs> like when you talk about UX, it it feels like you're doing nothing. But uh, how example, like how I 
tell it to my grandma mm -hmm. how I explained it to her was like when, when I was a kid she always wanted me to be an architect because you know you can do this and you can do buildings and blah blah, blah. and then I, I told her you know what I'm a digital architect now <laughs> you should be happy <laughs> like uh, because you can I think it's the the field that can be most connected to um, to UX mm -hmm. because it has humans. It has to be an ergonomic. You have to be aware of the technologies and everything. Mm -hmm. You have to be aware of uh, of the uh, the environment that that's in. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very mindful of designing stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's not like like when you do posters. Of course, you have to be careful about uh, readability and uh, about aesthetics, but doesn't have that much that functionality that can nearly kill a person, mm. like if you do it wrong. And mm -hmm. um, like what I do is I do a blueprint for an application or a website, and then I give it to the developers. So I'm there to figure out what you need and then how to do it. Mm -hmm. so yeah basically figure out figuring out the constraints and what is allowed and what is not allowed I really like the example with the posters because in graphic design I believe they're they have this uh, artsy touch where things can go either way especially the graphic designers that when I envision graphic designer I imagine someone who can slap different gradients and different fonts and make it so confusing that you're like wait a minute what am I looking at so these type of posters and design are more like artistic. They have they're like acting as provoke provocation for some kind of emotion. They don't have like that much usability or any kind of uh, action behind it. So I I really like the example that you gave. It was quite yeah. good. I usually say uh, UX designers are also like builders. Yeah. Like we, we have different materials, we work with what we have, we listen to our bosses <laughs> and we are like kind of making it also easier for the homeowners that will get into the home later on. So it's kind of like the middle man in the, in the middle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I follow you on Instagram and I usually see some kind of systems and schemas or some kind of flows behind in the screen. Uh, can you tell me more about that and when and where do you use them? Okay, so hmm. um, I have like, a, I, I feel like a relationship with systems because I think like when we talked about um, with science and, and, and creativity combining, I really feel it's the systems because what happened when I went on my, it was my internship. Um, I was hired to do, well, hired, internship to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to do, uh, to do like an information architecture for a website that was already live, but mm -hmm. they wanted to add more things. Mm -hmm. So I tried to figure out a way how to take what we have and then adjust that to, to each category that we had more mm -hmm. and doing that system, you start to see patterns that happen. Mm -hmm. And when you visualize things, and that's why I'm, I'm I'm saying like that science that you can't see, but actually has some kind of mathematics behind mm -hmm. that. It's, it's incredible to, to see that. So when you start doing those flow charts and, and uh, informational architecture, it really starts to look like something and uh that's that's the underline of of my work and i always like to plan everything and then to organize things and once you untangle all of that it really i don't know it's poetic mm -hmm. uh, like when you when you talk to a client about problems and the solutions they have it's very very messy and it's like a string that is just whole tangled and then you start like uh, untangling it bit by mm -hmm. bit and you get that just perfect picture that you can almost feel. Mm. Yes, the ball of yarn that is like yes. so tangled that you don't know where it starts, where it ends. So I was thinking about when you were explaining, mm -hmm. do you encounter this chaos in the beginning of the projects? And of course you do, like you mentioned, uh, but do you manage to keep the straight um, string of line uh, all the time or it happens at midpoint it also gets chaotic and then continues of to be course. straight 
Yeah, and I think that's also the beauty of it because, mm -hmm. like, uh, it also works like the the double diamond. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, the the opening and then the closing and then the opening again and then the closing again. So at the first, you gather all of the things, all the requirements and everything. But then when you start opening it again, it gets tangled. Mm -hmm. But that tangling is that that last tangle that you have to untangle. Mm -hmm. So you you get messy but once you get messy again you know mm -hmm. that you're almost until the end so it's uh you know it, it doesn't feel uh soul crushing <laughs> oh so yeah <laughs> because you know it, at some point it has to close again and to stop for yeah. a while yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> until the next iteration but yeah, yeah. i really like uh, the both phases when you're like uh, mm -hmm. getting input and feedback and it's chaotic and then you start closing it in and be like okay now I'm going to be uh, introvert again and work on it and then yeah vent it and then like you said uh, get some more feedback and then go back in yeah quite quite nice explanation um you have a bachelor's degree in art like you said in visual communication can you tell us a little bit uh, what did you learn about uh, work and life during this period oh wow okay <laughs> so uh Firstly, so so I finished visual communication design, so it was Deveka, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, in Split in Croatia, and that was on an art academy. Uh, I was there for three years because I got uh, a job uh, mm -hmm. after that summer that I finished the bachelor, and I decided not to go to the masters. Okay, it was also not quite what I wanted. I wanted to do UX, but this was more a bit uh, speculative design. Mm. Mm. So I wasn't that much into that. Um, how what I learned? Um, I learned that group work can be very challenging. Okay. <laughs> I learned that uh, time management is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I've also learned that um in the field there are so many amazing people um we also had uh sociology we had semiotics which was uh i don't know my favorite part because again that humanity things of of technology is very fun for me um one thing that i remember that i really like about that is uh, once our professor was telling us how, like, why are we here and why mm. are we educating? And he said, like, uh, you know, when you're a designer, you always have those people who think they know how to design mm. and uh, they always, you know, they have eyes. So why are they not designers? So they always have opinions. They always have something. So once you are going into education in UX or in design in general, you have those people around you that are like, ah, that's easy. I can do that. Mm. So the professor told us one great thing that I think I will remember for the rest of my life is uh, like a, everyone can be a designer. And the difference between a professional designer and um, a amateur or like a, a enthusiast mm. is that both of them can do amazing work. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know they will do 50 designs and one will be amazing um, academically or awarded or something but the difference is that an education designer will do quality work all the time so it will mm -hmm. go like this and then it will go like this and then it will go like this but uneducated designers will have it will, will look like this they will go they won't they can't do quality work all the time because you know it's also creativity it also depends on your um mentality in that moment mm -hmm. so you know when you're educated you did your ten thousand hours mm -hmm. <laughs> of design and you will do quality work most of the time and mm -hmm. then once or twice you will get you know a bit I better yeah, yeah. <laughs> i yeah. think when you were explaining that uh difference between educated and uneducated designer it sounds so weird when you say designer. I'm like, yeah, am I? <laughs> what does it mean? I mean, yeah, I design stuff, but am I a designer? Like in the sense of like, it's so prestige, you know, it sounds like so godly, like powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's another topic. But uh -huh. <laughs> what I wanted to say is that um, an educated designer probably will have like a, a Jenga of a foundation. 
some pieces would be missing and they would might go back and forth and back and forth. And supposedly educated designer is supposed to have like a good foundation where yep. everything will go stronger and better like mm -hmm. uh, in the future. So yeah. I think yeah. it, it, it's a really good advice. And really ed education is that, like that foundation that you need, that head start that you need before you get into the real world. And um, as with everything, uh, dear listeners, you take what you get, like you, whatever <laughs> works for you, you take it and you apply it. Some things might be uh, useless, some, might, some things will be might, might be like, aha, uh -huh, I really need this in my career in the future. That's that's also one thing that I wanted to say, like in um when when we talk about uneducated designers i'm thinking mm -hmm. about you know that uh, a person that you have maybe in your family that does um i don't know postcards when it's someone's birthday or mm -hmm. something like you know it's um education doesn't have to be formal mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's even better not to have a formal education in some part and i think that you are a professional designer if you're making money out of it mm -hmm. so if you're you know if you because what happens usually especially at the start so i don't want to uh, uh, discourage any of our listeners like yeah. um you know you will say i charge let's say 500 dollars for a logo and mm -hmm. the, the person will say yeah i have a cousin who knows how to draw so they will draw it it might look good it mm -hmm. might really look good but it won't look good every time and if you're you know trying and 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 educating yourself and enjoying design, you're you're gonna get better and better, and all of your work will be good. Enjoying design, yeah, that part it has to be underlined because most of people, I think, they get get into so many different fields because they're hype or they're interesting, but they're not really enjoying it. Yeah. And you can easily see it when, when someone is just uh, following a trend or they're just like hopping on another train of uh, pop popularity. So I think enjoying what you do is the core of uh, attracting uh, these clients that are willing to pay that $500 yeah. for the logo. Uh, can you tell us what a visual communication designer does? Oh, okay so it's basically a graphic designer with a bit more superpowers Ooh. so uh we did so it's not just um, it's not like you do posters and logos and and stuff but you can also like uh carry the whole creative uh, process and solve problems for example for branding we also did photography we did um we did UX, we did coding, we did WordPress, we did stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so visual communication designer doesn't limit on uh, just graphic design, but whatever a visual communication is, which means maybe not just words. So not verbal communication, mm -hmm. not uh, something, not something you hear, but something that you see, mm -hmm. which is like. 80% of the things around it. Yeah. Would you say it's then a bigger umbrella above UX? Yeah. Above UX and above uh, graphic design. So just everything in general. And that's why like on, uh, we also did topography. I almost forgot that was like mm -hmm. most of the uh, the part in, uh, when you do masters there, mm -hmm. you can uh, go to typography. So be a type designer okay. you can uh, go to i think like in general so you s continue doing photography uh branding uh, and everything uh and also they had ux so interaction design mm -hmm. so an umbrella over those three i would say but yeah typography was one of the biggest things there did you like did. it uh yes yes did you, did you create something uh, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. we did. I think every semester we did one typo typography, one font, however you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also did layout. So oh. I don't know, for magazines and for books, we did a lot of books there as well, because that's also graphic design and visual yeah. communication design. Yeah, yeah, we had a professor. His, uh, his name is Nikola Jurek. He's like on the world known uh, mm -hmm. creation uh typographer and he was we had the the opportunity to have him as our professor so we learned a lot <laughs> that's so cool do, you, do yeah. you keep any of the works from that period do you have a folder maybe with the things you did I think I do 
somewhere okay. on my computer yeah okay if you don't mind we can share like i can edit in the episode later on and just sure. show what it is was it difficult to get uh, your first job in the field and tell us a little bit more about your internships and how was that like transition yeah um so as as i was you know in in high school and then in university i like at the time i didn't feel maybe I was younger, maybe it just wasn't like this, but I didn't feel that you have to connect with people to, to you know, get into the field. But I felt like how I was, um, you know, a media designer and then a visual communication designer. I kind of felt like I was already in the field, like who's going to be in the field if not us. Mm. So I, uh, I, my brother is also a, a developer. So I kind of knew from him a lot of stuff. And uh, I, I really didn't feel that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm alone in this world and I have to connect with people. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my first job was, uh, so I, I, we had to do an internship mm-hmm. that was part of our, uh, our college, our university thing. Mandatory, so we had, yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it was mandatory. So you go to companies that you know that maybe some students before went Mm -hmm. and I wanted to do uh, something related to UX. So I asked my brother to ask his company where he works if they have a slot open for internship Mm -hmm. and they had. So uh, I got there and we talked about, uh, you know, UX in general and what would I like to learn? And uh, I wanted to learn UX and then I did that uh, informational architecture and stuff Mm -hmm. because that was their uh, like... um, side project from the founders of the company mm-hmm. so they uh they gave me like uh, that project just to play around and see what I can get from there awesome. and I did that for I don't know a week or two mm-hmm. and uh, I presented to them and they were like how you can do that that's so cool like because they didn't do that much UX like in depth and you know when you're in uni you just want to do everything so Mm -hmm. uh, I did user personas I did everything 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 and uh, they were like okay this is cool (laughs) and I did it for a bit more and after that they invited me again and they asked like hey we need someone who does UX we didn't know how to hire someone or how to start but you know having you as someone who's studying that could Mm -hmm. be really good Mm -hmm. and then they hired me and I stayed there for two years and you know when you have a job for two years you kind of uh you already have that uh experience that most of the companies have and then I moved to Germany and I changed two jobs there um and now I'm freelancing but I really feel like it was if it was a year after that it would be very hard to get in the field Mm -hmm. Like, especially that was like pre-COVID thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. So basically uh, being brave and asking in your circles about opportunities uh, worked out so good for you. And two years is better than one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I love how you mentioned that in the beginning, you also um, did the work by the book, like trying to implement everything that you have learned freshly from university or college into the work. And I I think that's a really, really nice transition from one to another. And yeah. congratulations on starting a freelancing. How do you like it? <laughs> and uh, what is your, um, like, how would you describe it to someone who is not freelancing yet in design? <laughs> okay. This is so fun. Uh, <laughs> so I started freelancing when I was in high school, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. So you know, I did logos and stuff, which was not very pretty because I wasn't that educated. And uh, and um, I don't know. It really happened so organically that I never felt like the okay. Now I'm freelancing. I'm doing this. I'm doing that because I always had fun with work. And mm-hmm. whenever I didn't have fun with work, I would struggle a bit, and then I would leave that because mm-hmm. you know it just work should be fun especially if you're in the field that you love so 
that's an advice also if you're not having fun if you can do it just leave, leave. it's not supposed <laughs> to be like that <laughs> it okay. should be so I always said that working for someone doesn't it feels more like work than it was freelancing mm. And I also think that because I moved to Germany and also because I uh, maybe I don't have the network that I organically had back home, um, I was also applying for a lot of jobs, but I also wanted to work for an agency again because I wanted to have different uh, projects Mm -hmm. because when you do another project, because you're untangling something Mm -hmm. and you untangle it and then you get to another book of yarn, Mm -hmm. but but in like when you do product design that I did for like a year, you you're just untangling stuff and you don't see the end, you don't see the beginning, and it's uh, you don't you don't have the reward. Mm. So I always also like on my first job I was working very closely with funders, so we would do uh, proposals and we would do processes, and I really like that. So. I always wanted to to go to freelancing, but I always felt it wasn't the right time mm. because, you know, it takes a while to start earning money. It takes a while to get clients and to to just organize yourself into that. So I always I never felt I was brave enough. Mm. But now I don't know what happened, but I'm brave enough and I'm doing it in Germany, <laughs> which <laughs> is, you know, they're really strict about stuff. Yes. Yeah. So yeah it's yeah that's how I came here I wanted to have projects I wanted to have my own time and I don't know what you asked me <laughs> <laughs> I, I asked you how do you feel about freelancing <laughs> but I think you summarized it quite yeah, uh, it's, it's fun another, it's another form of learn yeah for you yeah yeah so yeah I get is. it uh, can you tell us a little bit about working as a foreigner in Germany like maybe some tips for someone who is uh, reconsidering that maybe moving to somewhere else to try their luck what is one advice that uh, you would give Mm, prepare yourself before (laughs) you go Mm -hmm. so find a job and also learn about the culture before you go okay and about the location that you are because uh for example in germany also in i think italy maybe france also croatia uh you need to know the language if you want to get a job Mm -hmm. and especially in ux because you have to uh, talk to users and you can't expect them to talk in you users and clients so you can't expect them to talk in english to you mm-hmm. so uh do your research beforehand and really prepare yourself while you're still in your original location mm-hmm. uh, before going there there's there are a lot of uh, agencies that that, that do uh, those transfers and stuff so just uh, yeah prepare yourself and do research it's uh for for me the grass is not greener on the other side it's where you water it Mm -hmm. so you know okay changing location doesn't mean to that you will be better somewhere but maybe you get a fresh start maybe you 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 get inspiration to do more than you did back home yeah, moving somewhere for me is just maybe just turning a new page. It's yeah. not necessarily easier or harder. It's just another one. A new, yeah, 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 yeah. So I think, I think preparation is the best advice you can give to someone. Mm. Do you have a favorite destination you have visited thanks to your work? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> So, uh, so I have an Instagram, uh, it's probably going to be somewhere, yeah, <laughs> but here. this is what, yeah, this is where I met the most incredible person, you including, uh, and I had one of the most amazing opportunities that I had. I had branding collaborations, but also I last year, yeah, it's last year because it's February. Uh, I got an opportunity to speak at a conference in Stockholm, in Sweden. Mm. Mm. So uh, that was just, I, I don't know, I will still feel like I'm dreaming that I went there. <laughs> so I don't know how to explain to you how warm those people were there. 
how connected I was to everyone that I talked there. It was just amazing. And uh, Sweden is amazing. And I really liked it there. Um, yeah, so I've been to Stockholm because of my career and because of uh, Instagram. Because they had like a open uh, applications for speakers. Mm -hmm. And one of the people that I follow, who's also an influencer, mm -hmm. Uh, she posted there because she works for the company there. Oh. So uh, she said, like, if you want to talk on this, on a story, and I clicked and I applied and I remember applying and then I went, I don't know, to a store or something. I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> And then I got like, hey, we want to invite you. And I was like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah. So you basically applied just for the sake of trying out. And yeah. It happens that they actually wanted you to present. Yes. Did yes, you have yes. to figure out the, the topic afterwards? Mm, um, yes. Yes. Because <laughs> I just <laughs> I just needed to tell them that I want to apply and like what's my background and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And then they asked me like what should be my topic? Like what do I want to talk about? Because they did it for usability day. Uh, which is I think every second Saturday in November I'm not sure maybe check that out and correct me mm -hmm. <laughs> I can do that as well and this year's uh, World Usability Day was collaboration well last year collaboration and and uh, communication or something like that mm -hmm. and one of my specialties and one things that I really really enjoy is uh, collaboration between developers and designers mm -hmm. And I have like a huge uh, system in Figma that I do and that I use and that that really works well. And then I talked about that and I mm -hmm. told them that I really enjoyed that and that I want to talk about that. So they were like, yeah, go for it. And they really liked it. Yeah. Awesome. Was that your first uh, speaking event? In public, yes. Like in live in front mm -hmm. of public, yes. I didn't want to ask them how many people there were before, so I don't faint. Mm -hmm. But at the end, they told me like around 300 people were there. So that was like, I was oh. shaking. I wasn't good. But, you know, I said what I needed to say. So, <laughs> By the way, do you have a recording so you can, yeah. you can revise it and then improve for the next talk? Yes. 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 And yes. do you have the next talk? like already scheduled i uh, not now i don't think so mm -hmm. but i had few days ago well few weeks ago i uh, there was a virtual conference and mm -hmm. well it was virtual uh like ux 360 and mm -hmm. i talked about being a freelancer there mm -hmm. like in a networking session so that was mm -hmm. and you have like any uh, speaking uh, events planned soon or i don't think so not, not yet. No. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll so, let you know. <laughs> of of <laughs> course, we will find out. <laughs> but I was just curious. Uh, did you like uh, how to say prepare for these speaking opportunities, or you were like, let me try, and then I will learn on the go how it happened? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Like again, being a designer, like always, we always did presentations. So mm -hmm. I, I don't fear you know, talking in front of a public, in front of a presentation. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, everything I would do with a presentation. So I, I really, that's just a way of speaking. Mm -hmm. And I don't have that fear of public speaking. So that's okay. good. I don't know why, but I don't have it. And uh, I I prepared, like, you have to prepare a lot for, for a presentation. You have to do the presentation. You have to practice, you yeah. know, revise it. Yeah, and practice like a lot of times mm -hmm. that you memorize it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah in general I didn't prepare I just want to go and see and I know that with time I will get better at that awesome what is the non-work related activity that gives you inspiration and when you feel down it picks you up basically well I, I like uh, outdoor activities so walking maybe swimming if it's summer uh, mm -hmm. hanging out with their friends going for a coffee and just in general being outside of the house helps a lot mm -hmm. um, also like uh, I don't know going to the gym uh, as well and I really enjoy watching series or cartoons so yeah okay. those kind of stuff just helps you rewind a bit 
I think that's a very common thing for creatives that they like to be away of the workspace so they can get back to uh, having ideas and work. yeah. Do you have a favorite UX book? Um, I I really like the Articulating Design Decisions book okay. because it's uh, relatable but also educational and I love that and it's uh, written very uh, storytelling. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. that one it has a parrot on it. I have it somewhere there. <laughs> For aspiring professionals interested in becoming UX UI designers. Despite the current layoffs and all the problems that we encounter with the hiring and also applying for new jobs, um, what would you give as an advice and maybe uh, as tip for other people that are trying to get into the field? Uh, so in general, don't don't give up. <laughs> it's it's been. Like 2023, I think, has been really hard because of all of the things that happened in the world for the past three years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everything now sucks. I don't know if I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, generally like uh, on NN Group, if you're interested in UX, you have to read them. They're the fathers of, of UX and usability. So Jacob Nielsen wrote an article like what happened with UX in the last 60 years or so. Mm -hmm. And in general, we're still going better than we were. But, you know, when you're looking at a graph, it looks like this. But when you zoom out, it looks like this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's 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 not easy now to get a job for anyone. So don't feel like you're, you know, wasting time or that you did a mistake, mm -hmm. but it will get better. But the market is getting a bit more stable where you know it's getting better covid was horrible wars are horrible and and uh you know it affected everyone mm -hmm. so just continue doing what you love because you know also think about it if it's the thing that you really love like ux and try to find your passion but uh like if you have an opportunity not to work Try to focus on yourself and building portfolio and everything. And if you have to work, uh, because, you know, we're all humans, we're adults, we have to work. Uh, maybe just try to see, because UX is very um, grateful for that. You can do whatever you do with any kind of humans you can translate into UX. So, you know, everything counts. So, yeah. It's not as bad as it seems eventually. Yeah. And uh, you said a really good point there to focus on yourself and to figure out yeah. if that's the, the thing you love. I would also recommend um, journaling and figuring out what you're really passionate about because this tightly relates also to your personal branding if you decide also to start freelancing. Because yeah. another foundation that as a designer and freelancer, you need to have figured out before you get out there and start presenting yourself. So that was very good uh, advice. And for uh, closing questions, a little bit, um, how to say, personal questions. Mm -hmm. um, if uh, you can uh, travel in any time, like era or anywhere, where would you go? Oh, my God. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, era? Time period. Maybe. Huh? Time period. Yeah, maybe the 90s. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they seem fun. Uh, and like a place, maybe um, Australia, because it's really far away. So if I could just trans translate there, <laughs> that would be very cool because I want to see it. But, you know, it's, it's okay. far away. So Australia in the 90s. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know what happened then there, but <laughs> maybe. it sounds fun. Um, yeah. Do you have like a favorite dish of yours that you're like, oh, this is my my soul food. I really love it. Uh, living yeah. abroad, anything Mediterranean <laughs> now works. <laughs> so, but I don't know. I, I really like the greens uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with potatoes and stuff. So maybe that. Okay. Is it that, that specific Croatian salad? No, it's blitva. I don't know how you call okay. it. It's like big green leaves and then you cook them with uh, with potatoes and then you have like meat or eggs mm -hmm. or something on the side. Mm. Can you name something that is on your bucket list? Something that uh, you, feels you like uh, dreaming? 
makes you dream. It's a dream. Maybe it's not the realistic, but I want to visit like the most countries that I can, like Mm -hmm. to be like an explorer on on reeling my map. Okay. So maybe just travel as much as possible. Okay, that's a great, great one. I want to. (laughs) Yeah. Um, What do you want to be remembered for? I don't know, being a good person, maybe. Okay, that's valid. That's good. (laughs) And last question would be, uh, do you make your bed in the morning? First thing in the morning. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes. If I feel like I need that inspirational moment, like cross the first thing then I do it but generally mm-hmm. no interesting interesting I'm just yeah. trying to prove a hypothesis in my mind uh-huh okay yeah so in my opinion people who are like very organized in their life and they have everything figured out they make their bed in the morning and those who are a little bit more artistic and love chaos they don't make their bed in the morning that often that's so interesting yeah but I think it may be depending on the season, depending on the mood, depending on your uh, energy levels as well. Mm. So I'm just still collecting data. And when I finally, with these interviews, find out what okay. is the result, <laughs> I will oh, I wanna know. know. <laughs> <laughs> and I really find that interesting because I always think that I'm like the balance between technology and analytics and creative. So, you know, mm-hmm. I do sometimes. So maybe, maybe your theory works. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see, we shall see. Yeah. And uh, for the end, I would ask you to leave your uh, business online card and maybe tell us a little bit more about where people can find you and what do you offer and what you can help them with. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, you can find me on Instagram mostly. It's uh, UX UI with Petra, uh, with tiny dots in between but you'll find me um you can also contact me on petra ss design uh at uh, Mm -hmm. gmail.com so if you you know want to collaborate right away and you want something a bit more serious than Mm -hmm. instagram but you can always reach out to me on instagram um i generally so i do ux ui but um I am more into, um, I don't know, doing the project from start to finish, maybe also uh, jumping in if your designer is not there anymore for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you wasn't you weren't happy with how it turned out or whatever. I can also help you with uh, discovery. So figuring out what your project is and what are your problems and how can we solve them. Uh, I do web apps, um, websites, so landing pages, something. I can also advise you a bit about social media, not too much. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't know, mobile apps, but just the drawing. So Mm -hmm. I I know developers, Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I can connect you with them. But I'm uh, I'm in this uh, UX business design moment more. Okay, and you mentioned earlier about mentorships. Ah, yeah. So if you are so if you're not interested in design work, you can always uh, reach out to me on Instagram or on ADP list. My name is mm-hmm. Petra Smolcic. You can also see it somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can reach out to me and book something. I have like a 30 minutes session, I think. So we can talk about anything you want. Um, and uh, yeah, in, in general, I really like to help people. So if and, and talk to people and meet people. So if you want to reach out. I'm always open. Yeah, you have to press the message and just send whatever. <laughs> awesome. I will we'll leave all the connect. details uh, on the screen or in the links in the description or in the comments. You will be able to find them. And for closing, there is nothing left to say except if you like this kind of episodes and all of the content on this channel to leave a like and subscribe for more because that helps the channel get discovered easily. And also definitely share with someone who would benefit from this information. And that's it from us. Uh, Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.